Okay, well, those are not simple, short questions to answer. They're short questions, they're not so simple to answer briefly. Well, the original work was technological in nature. The question was, could we actually figure out a way to connect different kinds of packet switch nets using radio and satellite and wireline telephone circuits to actually build a multi-network system in which every computer, regardless of which network it was on, could communicate with every other one. The applications were unspecified. The only point of the net was to carry data back and forth in, in these little packets. That uh, succeeded wild, wildly well, and so I'm very happy with that result. It was also done on behalf of the American Defense Department in, uh, in aid of using computers for command and control. And that also was very successfully uh, demonstrated in some of the uh, action taking place, like in the Gulf War. Uh, the military made use of internet technology to do what it needed to do. And so from the purely uh, engineering point of view, I was, I was happy to see that the thing that we said we would build actually did what we said it would do. So that was, you know, any engineer would like that to happen. Today's internet uh, is vastly bigger in scope and in application than anything I anticipated when we were doing the work 30 years ago. Uh, it's, uh, as you know, heavily in use by the uh, general public. It's being used in business and education and there's a long list. What's important about it is that now it's reached the point where it's having serious economic and social impact. The, the presence of this meeting, this Internet uh, Governance Forum, is evidence of that. That's both satisfying and scary at the same time because if we get it wrong, if we don't set good uh, frameworks for its further evolution, it may go off in a direction that is less beneficial to all of us than we would like. As for the future, it's already showing itself. The wireless access to the Internet with mobiles and you know, Wi-Fi and WiMAX is transforming uh, the way in which we use it and opportunities we have for building applications. In the longer term, I hope we see more and more broadband access to the net so that people can use applications that today are hard to do. For example, if you have a server at home and you don't have very much bandwidth going outbound, even if you have a lot coming in, uh, you can't really serve anybody or you can't have video conferencing very effectively. It's, it's ironic when you're sitting on an asymmetric high-speed uh, connection that you could receive high-quality video, but you can't send it because you don't have enough data rate. So we will get to the point where symmetry is not only desired, but I hope supplied. More critically, we're trying to make the network much more accommodating for international use, that is to say, multiple languages. The web itself and email packages are now capable of supporting Unicode to allow virtually any language to be supported, but the domain name system needs to be um, in adapted to support that as well. And so we're in deep in the midst of that now. Uh, in the longer term, uh, one of my pet projects at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California is to design and deploy an interplanetary extension of the Internet. Some people look at this and say, you know, is this a science fiction story? The answer is no, we have to support space exploration because that's the only way we'll learn about our solar system and where we came from. But in order to do that work, to put all those robotic devices out there and eventually people, we need communications capability that's richer than what we have now. Today we have point-to-point -point radio links. What we want is a full network capability in the same way that we have it on the internet today here, terrestrially. So we're poised now in that project to have a two-planet internet in operation between Earth and Mars to support uh, more uh, landers on the surface of Mars sometime during 2010 to 2020. So, you know, as, as this century begins to unfold, we'll see an interplanetary backbone beginning to form. And, of course, for me, that's very exciting, too. Uh, I think several things are already very apparent. We're seeing a transformation of the um, entertainment and information industry from a mass medium with a small number of suppliers going out to a large number of consumers to all of us being participants in the production and sharing of information. So blogging, uh, YouTube, uh, things, people uploading videos, of course the pervasive email uh, are, and people putting up their own web pages are all evidence of communities forming in virtual cyberspace uh, to uh, have conversations that they never could have before. 
the other thing that's interesting about internet is that it is not a one-way medium. In fact, it's a group interaction medium, so it's not even just simply two-way. We've never had a flexible medium quite like that before. And this group phenomenon where you can talk to people you don't know yet, but you know that they're interested in common things because you discovered them on the same website, that's a phenomenon that we've never really quite had before. And it is dramatically different and new. And it, it, it implies a sharing of information that we couldn't do so easily before. So it's this um, phenomenon of information sharing which I'm very excited about. Some people say information is power. I say information sharing is power. Great, thank you so much. Okay.